Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the vlog. This is two in a day that I'm doing today. Glass. Of course. Robot Fermenter. Uh, Tortec Info. Actually, now he's changed his name on Instagram now, so I'm going to have to look it up on her and let you know what it is. And, uh, oh, it's on the label. Should be on the label. Uh, System Error Comic .co .uk by Phil Chapman, no less. System Error Comics is the guy who's done the artwork here. So, uh, yeah, you can grab these on harrisonsbrewery.com forward slash shop. And the reason why I'm doing a quick video now, I've done a vlog today and I've come home. And I've answered like two or three emails, and you know what? They've got me really quite excited. So, first things first, there was a chap in, I'm just looking on my emails now, what I've sent back. Um, there was a young man, a young man, uh, where is he located? Uh, the, 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 there it is. TheBeerEngine.co.uk. There's a little, uh, a little plug for him. So he messaged me asking some questions about the bottling process, and uh, well, I've just emailed him back saying he wanted to call me. I haven't got time to call people on the phone. I hate talking on the phone. I'm quite an introvert, believe it or not. Anyway, I said, look, message me any questions that you've got. No problem. I'll. I'll answer them if I can. And uh, at the same time, I've also been messaging uh, Chris at Raw Culture Limited, I've got notes, in Aberdeen, the guy who sent the kombucha. And uh, he's obviously building a can machine as well, or a bottle filling machine. I've just noticed the lights outside, so Gemma's going to pull up at any minute, so I'll probably, I'll probably have to put a cut into that. I wanted to do this in one take. Anyway, Chris and I have been talking about a bottle filler. Um, so I suppose this is the perfect segue for me to throw in a couple of clips of video that I sent to him this afternoon. And we're talking about um, how to make the can filler fit into a bottle rather than a can. So we'll just roll these couple of clips now. Right, I've got a couple of ideas. I thought you'd like the, the pink notepad. So my PRV, uh, pressure relief counter pressure filler thing, kind of had this uh, T-piece on the top and uh, one side went down into the tube like so. This side had like a dial out P PRV on it, only small, and you'd set the pressure that you had in the bottle with that and then on um, this side it had kind of a two-way lever valve you've probably seen them and you could change it for uh, either gas in or liquid in so it essentially had another t-piece here for want of a better word and then it had a bung obviously this is flexible pipe so that can bugger off to the side and it had like a rubber bung the slotted into the bottle just like so of course the problem was every time you filled your bottle up uh, and you raised the fill head and stuck the whole assembly onto the next bottle when you changed the lever you know when you swung the lever across to let CO2 in any liquid that was left in this fill tube would splurge out at the bottom and with beer that caused a lot of foam I don't think it will be too much of an issue with kombucha because I think by the time the bottle has started to fill up with kombucha I think the foam is light enough to have dissipated before it gets to the top. So uh, that is one option for counter pressure. I'll just stop this video so it's not too long and then I'll talk to you about another option that I'm thinking about for the sensor assembly going through with how we've got the can filler designed at the minute. So just doing this quickly 
on the fly, <clears throat> I was thinking if you had like a bung again at the top of your bottle, just like a, a rubber wine cork that you get in homebrew setup kind of things, and through that you send your fill rod down to the bottom and then that runs off and uh, goes away to solenoid as per and then for the sensor you know to make this small enough to fit through the top of a bottle in one shot you could still use this single tube for um, gas and product but then I was thinking, just get in like a 3mm welding rod, stainless steel welding rod, and just forcing it through here, and then just having that just sat at the side of your fill tube. And again, like you said in your video, you could, you could shrink wrap this section to protect you from any false triggering, from any bubbles, or you get like a meniscus on bubbles which can trigger it sometimes, so... That's probably a good idea. And then you could have that side by side. And you could have your smallest like 8mm tube. And that could basically be sitting right next to the tube. As close as you like. And then as soon as the liquid level comes up. It triggers the assembly. Closes the valve. And it lifts up. And like I so said all you have to do is figure out how you wanted to have the uh, CO2 input. Now here's another thing that you could do as well. You could just have the CO2 as another hole that this comes through and it doesn't protrude, if you get me. It just like just comes through and opens into the bottom of your bung. So you're just like spraying CO2 in. Mind you, you'd not be able to have this bung solid on the top of the bottle. You'd have to have like a little gap. Because with CO2 being heavier than air, I find that my CO2 actual um, pipe is quite high on the whole assembly. And when the CO2 drops down to the bottom of the, the can, or the bottle, or whatever we're, we're filling up, um, it's naturally displacing the oxygen that's in there. And then when I lift, I purge CO2 as well before I put a lid on. A bit easier with bottles because there's less chance of uh, blowing that CO2 off the top. You see, because a can's quite flat, whereas a bottle, of course, is a little bit smaller. Anyway, I'm just kind of thinking on the hoof a little bit about situations that could help you. And I think the biggest issue for me is having a large, uh, a large shaft going into a small hole. I'm sure my missus wouldn't think that was an issue. But there we go. I'm sure you know where I'm coming from. Right, that was perfect timing actually, they just burst in through the door before I rolled the video clips. So, um, yeah, Chris and I have been talking about how to um, basically get such a small target of a bottle opening for the fill rods and everything else. And it's been really quite interesting and they were just a few of my thoughts that I sent to him this afternoon and I thought they'd make good kind of... Um, content for you guys out there because you, you're obviously interested otherwise you wouldn't be watching this channel at all would you but while I'm here I feel like I should just be brazen and have a complete and utter <sighs> boobs out full frontal plug of what I think is one of the best beers I've ever made and that's saying something even if I do blow my own trumpet which I don't because I can't reach, but if I had a rib out, I might. Anyway, Secret City, check out the label, obviously by Phil. It's fantastic artwork. You'll notice as well a slide DeLorean in the corner zooming in. So this is a New England IPA with extra pale malt, Vic Secret and Eldorado hops, and Sanders yeast. So we revisited it from last year because of the colour problems, of course. Now we're going to open this beer and drink it, but stay tuned because there's a brand new YouTuber on the tubes 
who has messaged me today, we're going to talk about him in a second, and he's, he's bought a kit and he's building a brewery, so you're going to want to know who this is, so you can go to his channel and drop a sub, but I need a bit of motion lotion before we get there, so I'm not going to be cracking this can today, this is going to go back to work, because uh, when I was labelling all these Secret City cans, I didn't order enough labels, we were about 75 labels short, so I've got 75 cans with no label on, and it's not worth printing 75 labels. So I've got the beer in this glass, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this into a Harrison's Brewery, The Brew Shed, robot fermenter glass. Now this New England IPA is available on the website and the recipe will be on there shortly, don't pester me. You know, it'll, I'm busy. <laughs> it'll be on there as quickly as I can get it on there, which ain't going to be f far away, it's not going to be long. But I just want to make sure we uh, sort out all of the notes on the recipe and the water profiles and stuff like that, because I'm getting a lot of messages from people asking about water profiles for the recipes I already have on the um, website. And my suggestion is to you to um, use your own water profile and move it towards the beer style. If it's a Nipa, then you know, favour a softer water style rather than something that you might go for for a, a, a West Coast IPA. Anyway, so you may remember when we used the Sanders yeast last year and indeed we had oxidation issues on canning and I've discovered a couple of things which have helped me. Uh, one, we were a lot more careful and we've got the purge and everything set up on the can machine so it is absolutely spot on, I mean spot on. And then secondly, I've discovered vitamin C, ascorbic acid, <laughs> oh look at that, I was just putting my uh, torch on my phone just to show you, just look at the colour of that beauty, no mud here boys and girls. So vitamin C, ascorbic acid, 5 grams per 100 litres, not a lot at all, and that just keeps the uh, oxygen molecules at bay a little bit. Uh, and then obviously this one has been babied in the tanks. We now have uh, CO2, uh, what's it called, positive pressure on all of the tanks to prevent any O2 ingress. And we've been rewarded for our efforts, we really have. So this bad boy is rocking in at 6.5%, New England IPA. I can't remember how many hops are in here, but I think what close to 20 grams per litre. It's a monster. Oh, it is amazing. You need to try this. Anyway, I'm going to have a quick slurp and look at my notes. Oh, what a combination. What a combination. Vic Secret and Eldorado. I could only get a small amount of Vic Secret this year. And I thought I'd better use them up before they get a year on them because they're, they're fresh as a daisy like. Mm. I'm glad I did. This is epic. I mean, I kid you not, boys and girls. Anyway, skates on. Don't want an half an hour long video. This was just meant to be five minutes. So, who is building a new brewery? Well, it's Andy from Force Four Priests Brewery and guess what he's got a YouTube channel so he's messaged me today well he messaged me in the week but sometimes it takes me a while to I get like 500 messages a week not obviously YouTube related most of them are spam saying do you want a new POS system for your business of course I don't but uh, yeah we found his uh, YouTube channel it is Four Priests Brewery, and that's three separate words, F-O-U-R, Priests, P-R-I-E-S-T-S, -E and then Brewery, B-R-E, W-E-R-Y, and at the moment he's sat on 12 subscribers, 
13 with me and he's only got two videos on there I've not watched his second one yet I'm gonna do that as soon as I come off of this video and uh, yeah I'm quite excited I hope he keeps it up because it looks really interesting and I'd love to see a new brewery build two and a half barrel kit um, it's got a lot of pipe work to put together and everything else but what I wanted to do before I sign out is just point you towards his channel boys and girls go and have a look give him some support tell him to make videos we need him to be making the videos seeing as I'm not doing as many as I should be now and uh, well I think that's about it for this quick um, addendum to today's vlog well it's going to be a new vlog in its own right I'll probably put this up before I put up today's vlog so if you want to know whether you should watch it or avoid it or not in today's vlog I walk the dogs so if you want to see Chance and Reggie that'll be on tomorrow or the day after or we've now changed Reggie's name to the twat and um, I rip out a timer on a combi boiler and put in a wireless room thermostat as well as doing some can labelling so it's all go doesn't stop does it so there we go boys and girls so Chris at Raw Culture Limited doing the kombucha I don't think he's got a YouTube channel but he's got a website so go and buy some of his kombucha it is top stuff I love it I don't drink a lot of it but he did send me a box full so I'm having like a can every week or so and uh, it's really something that you could probably drink every day but I'm trying to lose a few pounds you know, I started a diet in 2016 and I'm still on it and then of course you've got Andy at Four Priests Brewery and uh, oh, that's another thing I wanted to mention Andy at Four Priests apparently has met Martin from uh, Martin Bailey you know Martin the guy who's got the canal boat and all that kind of thing and uh, apparently Martin took a sack of grain all the way around on this um, uh, the Great Escape that he's uh, vlogged um, this summer and autumn uh, and it was one of Andy's sacks of grains or something like that I, he sent me a message detailing it all anyway so again there's another there's another crossover there you know isn't this brewing community absolutely amazing it's diverse it's intermingled and uh, it's fun to be part of and on that note boys and girls well I'll see you on the next one Mm. Ah, cheers.